Hey golfers, Tony with Reactionary Golf. I'm hoping you're enjoying this great Masters weekend. Um, I picked Rory earlier in the week, talking with the, one of the local sports guys. So I'm kind of rooting for him, but Patrick Reed is just playing unbelievable. So uh, we'll see what happens Sunday. But hey, I wanted to go ahead and get this video to you about how to create more width in your backswing. And what's the mo one of the what I believe is one of the most effective ways of doing it? So I got here this six foot eight former NCAA basketball athlete uh, happens to be my oldest son Taylor. So we we, we had some uh, work to do over Easter weekend. So I wanted to go ahead and get this to you guys. So one of the things I want you to notice, and this kind of ties into how to create more width, is actually he's followed the reactionary golf method pretty well. We see the club face right there. Looking good. So he's a pretty good student from that standpoint. But you can see right here, and this is kind of for a lot of golfers, if all of a sudden they start missing the ball a little bit, there's kind of this freeze or I gotta don't move as much. And what ends up happening is you can see how this right arm just really folds up. And we really do not, we start losing, in a sense, the, the motion in the golf swing. We start losing what the body needs to do and everything else, and things get to be too stable. So if we take a look, he's pretty much almost at the top of his back swing now again. There's not much rotation there, so he's really not taking advantage of his size at all. And so the, the contact wasn't very consistent on the way down. The distance really wasn't what it could be. And so then even though there's going to be more turn later on, you can see at the top, uh, good position. I like where the arms are, but if we take a look, really, we really don't have control of the club. You know, the swing is, in a sense, too long. I like the arm position here. That looks good. But we don't have the control that we really are looking for at the top. And so from there, as the body kind of is bringing it down. And what I want to do is kind of show you this picture right here. I know these aren't quite synced out. We'll back this up just touch. Is look at how the body's shoulders are pretty, pretty square right there. And, you know, this should be almost pre-impact position. That golf club should be coming or maybe right about there. So we can see really that that upper body is really leading the golf swing. Arms are not swinging. We're not really getting that the the lower body involved so it's kind of one of those that he's again trying to guide that down there so then through impact you know everything is just there, there's no force it's just momentum taking over uh some triple effect is gone is out there so all the forces and everything are just going this way there's no drive we're not really getting any drive this way as we go through the ball and you can see in one of these shots, because these are two different swings, but you can see obviously in this one uh, wasn't his best shot. And then from there, again, head's trying to stay down because again, because he topped it on the previous swing, head staying down, thinking that that's going to help, but unfortunately we can see that it doesn't. So because the head's not even moving, so this is another good example that if you think that the head needs to stay down in order to hit the ball, that's just because you top it. That's just not true. So it's really, uh, we, we kind of have to open things up in a sense and make the swing bigger in order to have more freedom and actually more control. So when you try to reduce the amount of moving parts, thinking you're going to gain control, which seems logical, but unfortunately in a motor control world, when we do that, uh, things just break apart. We really don't get that good flow. And now we've got to get some work to do. So next is the fix. Okay, golfers, now on the fix. What I'll have the golfer do is go ahead and set up with the, take their normal setup. Go ahead and take the lead hand off the club. Put your hand and arm behind your back. And with your trail arm, I'll go ahead and have the golfer swing it up to the top of the backswing. And what I'm looking for is making sure that arm is bent. I don't want that trail arm straight, kind of in a throwing position right there. So what I'm looking for next is as the golfer puts their lead arm and hand back in the proper position, making sure the body stays in the correct alignment right there. So now you can see that really get loaded up on that right leg for this right-handed golfer and then working on in the finish. And we're trying to really get the, the right arm in control. So that's key to go ahead and get that right arm in the right position and not be soft at the finish.
Now, what you're going to see here, and this is common, so what Taylor ended up doing is just trying to make this huge backswing, but we're really looking at getting control here, and that push of the right hand is key in creating that width, not the left. So I had him practice with the Golf Stick Pro and just creating that width and focusing on that, and then after about just a couple minutes of those practice swings, he was killing it on the range. So... Enjoy your Masters Sunday, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.